Now here we have raw sheep's wool. It has been washed several times, still looks a little bit dingy. Uh, looks like this is where the lanolin was at, the more yellow parts, but it's not sticky, so we have gotten that out. I still see a little bit of hay and little vegetable matter, but that will come out in the process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm going to heat it up and simmer it for a little while. And what I'm trying to do is to get it a little bit cleaner. You see it's a little soapy here. That's just Dawn dishwashing liquid. And it will get a lot cleaner than this and if there's any little bit of lanolin left like this little area right there of yellow then it will take care of that also this is the process of washing the baby doll sheep's wool i've already washed it maybe five times and you wouldn't believe some of the well, if you raise sheep, you would. Uh, some of the vegetable matter, stickers, rocks, sand, and who knows what else. This might be another, this might be a sticker right there, right here. That is, it's one of those little, this is one of those stickers. And if you've, if you've ever had dogs and animals, you know what that little sticker will do to their fur. So there's still some of these in here. And like I said, in the process, we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, if, if I heat this up and agitate it and add cold water, then I will felt it. But a little bit of felting is okay because that's exactly what I'm gonna use it for is dryer balls for your dryer. So, this is the first part after I've done all the deep cleaning. So let me get this uh, heated up and boiled a little bit. Let's see if we can get any of this extra dirt out. I can already see the water. I can already see the water changing color. So some of that extra sand and dirt is already starting to release. And oh, there's some more of those little stickers. So we'll get we'll get the rest of those little buggers out, and we'll get to the next process, which is drying. I already have some dried, but then we will dry this for a few days until it's very dry, and then I will comb it out on the blending board, and then I will blend it with some other colors that I have actually dyed previously. Okay, and now I have taken the natural, this is the, the yellow, and I put it on my soap, and I put my marbling, which is another sheep's wool, I believe it's merino, to give it a little color. Some of them you can see better than others. And also, uh, these are some larger ones that I had done. See how squishy they are? They're going to look really different when we get them felted. So this is what I call my marble. felted soaps and I have lightly needle felted them in place covered all the holes that I could see and now I will wet felt them to get them really tight they, they won't be loose like this they'll be really tight okay first I'm going to show you what I do when I start my wet felting process and I'm squeezing I'm trying to squeeze the air out of between the soap and the fiber 
and I am starting that uh, process of felting. First, I'm adding very hot water from the faucet, and see my my goal is those little tiny fibers are kind of loose, the red fibers, and you might be able to see a little bit of them, and I, I need them to felt to the yellow part of the fiber. So I am adding friction and squeezing, and that is hot water. So you can see the difference when we started. It's already starting to felt and, and shrink up. So I will, my little container there has very cold water in it. So I get it hot and add friction. In a minute, I will start being more vigorous and pressing, putting more pressure and more friction on it. And then as I go, I will dunk it into cold water and then I will dunk it into hot water again and I'll start the process again. It all takes around 20 to 25 minutes per bar of soap. And I will give you a little bit more details as we go. So you can see that was the cold water. And I will squeeze it more. I will add more friction. And I, I show you this out of the nylon stocking that I will add on the next one. I can be a little more vigorous with the nylon wrapped around it so that my little uh, marbling fibers won't be displaced. So you can see now it's really starting to take shape. And I'll just add more friction and then I will dunk it in the cold water again. I'll dunk it in the hot water again. So as you can see now, it's starting to really tighten up. And I add that more friction. And this is how you felt a bar of soap. See a little bit more. It's really tightening up now. See the difference? what we started and it's I mean it's shrunk very obviously now so this is what we end up with is a tighter bar there you go Okay, now I have skipped ahead a little bit. What I'm looking for here to see if any of those red fibers are moving. If they're moving, then it's not felted enough. And I'm moving back and forth to see. Because they need to be in position. If I have a really stubborn one that just will not felt, then I may take the scissors and clip it off. But uh, usually a little bit more rubbing and a little more hot water and cold water will take care of it. Okay, a little bit more rubbing and squeezing, and I'm pretty satisfied that everything is tight. You can see how much tighter it looks to the bar. It's taken the shape of the bar. And my last thing I do is usually dunk it in the cold water and squeeze out some excess water and then I will put them on a drying rack and dry them. And I'm just dabbing a little bit of the excess soap off of there so you can see how pretty it turned out. The red is really bright. There you go. See the difference? I mean, it looks like it's half the size, but it's all just felted tight to that bar of soap, and it will last quite a while. And this is the other way that I do it. This is the way I like to do it. I put it in this little dollar store nylon stocking, and it holds the fibers together. I dunk it until it gets really wet and start doing my squeezing. This is the cold water. I do that first. And I squeeze and squeeze, 
and when I feel like that it's good and all the air bubbles are missing or gone, then I put it under the hot water and I start the, the heat and friction part next, just like I did on the other bar. But I can work a little bit tighter and a little bit more vigorously and it keeps those little uh, marbling fibers that I put on top, it keeps those in place more but I want them to look marbly, so I don't want them to be in perfect alignment anyway. So I will, I will rub it and do the very same thing. But see, I can keep that nylon a little tighter, and I can work a little with a little more pressure and friction. It does speed up the process just a little bit. Now here, I will. At this point, I take the bar of soap out of the nylon because I don't want it to felt to the nylon. So see it's already got a lot of shape to it and then I will add more vigor and probably do this rolling and pressing and felting and dunking. I do that probably in another 10 minutes or so. Okay, so here we go. I'm towards the end. I did cut a little bit out to make speed it up. Uh, can't make these too long. And it looks like it's almost felted. It's taking great shape. Just the last few squeezes. And at the very end, I will again dunk it in cold water and squeeze out excess and then kind of reshape it until it... And then I will put it on the drying rack to dry. So... Okay, and this will be the end. See, I'll see it's really taken nice shape. It's nice and tight all around. It's got a nice shape. So I'm satisfied. See there? Look at that. That is such a difference. So that is felting another bar of soap. And I will skip ahead and I will felt several pieces so that I can show you in the end. Okay. So that is the end of that soap. There's the red one and now there's the green one. So we have two bars that are felted so far. And we will go to the next bar. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So we'll start all over again. And I wanna show you, see after I, when I put this in there, this is what it is, really loose, really full and this nylon really helps to keep it together. So we'll get all of these felted and I'll bring you back for um, a, a look at some of the others that I do. Now with the lilac one here, see it's felted a little bit to the sock. So I took it out just in time. It's already well on its way to being finished. But if I left it in there too long, then when I pulled it off, it would leave a lot of fibers that came unfelted, so I'd have to redo it. Okay, so I hope this gives you an idea of the process of felting. I wanted to make sure you, you understood that it all is basically the same. So even though you use a stocking or you don't use a stocking, it just makes it a little more control for me. And in the end, I get really wrinkly fingers and you'll see that. And there are the wrinkly hands. It's a good way to get all of that elderberry juice off of my fingers. So y'all like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And here are some of the bars that I completed. They make very nice gifts. And it's a fun thing to do with the children or grandchildren. So this is felting a bar of soap.